Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. Let's begin with a five minute preview of this episode. This video was shot in the USA, in the state of Indiana, and North America. In this episode, we'll show you the entire life cycle of a European paper wasp nest, that's Polistes dominula, from the time it was discovered in May of 2022, when it had maybe a dozen new cells built, all the way through midsummer when it peaked in size with over 200 cells built on the nest till the end of the nest life cycle in October, November of 2022, when it wound down and the population died off and flew off to mate. We'll show you the cell count that were visible during each of the growth stages it went through. It was fun to document how fast they were building out this nest. We'll show you all the drama these two co-founders queens went through as they defended their nest from predators of all sorts that wanted to eat their eggs or larvae or parasitize their nest. We watch them fight off spiders, carpenter ants. The ants in particular were very aggressive and they kept attacking the nest. You'll see this ant crawled right into one of the cells and tried to eat one of the eggs right there. The wasp turns around, sets off her alarm buzzing wings, and she grabs it by the leg and throws it right out of there. This was a very common occurrence. It was a daily thing, having to fight for their nest, fight for their territory. We couldn't help but be impressed at the number of times they used their wasp judo, just grabbing the leg or the antenna of the invader and just chucking it off the nest. There were parasitic wasps coming at them. They were always on alert and vigilant. They fought off mites and they fought off other types of insects that attempted to live in or around the nest. There's a whole related ecosystem of insects that target wasp nests and wasp larvae. We'll show you what it looks like when the Wasp queens lay eggs inside the cells, which is what you see here. We'll show you all the life stages inside the nest, from the eggs to the newly hatched larva, to the mature larva, all the way through to the pupating larva that become adult wasps when they chew their way out of the cell after pupation. And we'll also show you what it looks like when the pupating wasps who have developed through the egg and larva stage, are born and chew their way out of the pupating silk caps that they cover their cells with. And we'll show you the process of how they go out to forage for wood fiber, which they collect off of aged wood. And they fly it back to the nest, where they will inspect the nest and decide which cell they want to work on. And they'll build each cell one at a time, and they'll maintain any that need repair with that material. We'll also show you how they bring back insect protein that they hunt in the wild, they share it with each other, and they maloxate it, which means they chew it up into a fine pulp, and they use that food to feed their larva. And we'll show you that process in detail. You don't have to watch a wasp colony very long to find out what good biological control agents they are, reducing populations of insects around your property. Unfortunately, with invasive species, this goes both ways. It can be damaging to the local ecosystem if they're reducing the amount of resources available to our native wasps who rely basically on the same insect population to feed their larvae. We'll show you how they bring nectar back and create a honey-like substance for food. They also bring back water and they attach droplets to the cell walls to hydrate the nest and keep it cool. We'll show you the process of trophallaxis, which is where they engage in mouth-to-mouth -mouth exchange of fluids. You'll see how the two foundresses engage in dominance behavior, such as here, where they're nipping at each other and headbutting each other. And you'll see as the dominance hierarchy becomes established on the nest, the alpha female will shake her abdomen like a rattlesnake. And she'll sort of nibble at the heads of the others until they drop their antenna and bow down to the queen. And, and that's how they maintain dominance on the nest. And we'll show you examples of that. We'll show you how later in the season, the males begin to be born in the nest. And the reproductive females, who are going to be queens the following season, after they hibernate, they'll go out and start colonies. So the goal of this video is to show you the complete life cycle of a Polistes dominula nest.
the European paper wasp. They're very, very common now as invasive species here in North America. You will probably see these this upcoming spring and summer. So keep an eye out for these, and we hope when you see them next, you'll know exactly how they operate. As always, we thank you for being here. We had a great time in the six months that we began the channel in 2022, and we hope to bring you a lot more fun content in 23. So let's step back in time, back to May of 2022, when we first discovered this nest under the eaves of a local antique barn. Here we are on May 25th of 2022, taking a closer look at some of the more mature larvae. These would be the most mature larvae in the nest. They were the original three eggs that were hatched into larvae when the nest was just first formed. And now they're the largest, and they will be the first to weave their silk caps later on when they get to that stage, when they're about to pupate. In the meantime, you can also see some of the smaller larvae in other cells. And there's still eggs, but quite a number of them around the newer rings of cells, which are on the outer side of the nest. The adult wasps were staying busy on this day, doing foraging flights. And as you can see, they brought back a number of honey deposits or nectar deposits, which are kind of the wasp version of honey and they put them down here in the cells to the lower side of the frames. You can see a couple of those. These are food stores for when they need to feed themselves. The adults eat the sweet nectar honey that they make. They don't tend to feed that to the larva. The larva will get only protein in the form of maloxated insects that are hunted in the wild. You can see them here continuing to communicate through trophallaxis where they share fluids mouth to mouth. This has a lot to do with hydrating each other and also establishing dominance and establishing communication. You'll notice that for a lot of the day, whenever they're not actively foraging or taking care of the larva or the eggs, they're resting. And they'll often rest at the top of the nest, which is up against the ceiling of the eaves that they have attached the nest to. And they'll stay in that space between the wood and the nest while they rest. And they'll come down from there to check on the larva and to go out foraging again. But they often rest up there, and you'll see that pretty often with a lot of wasps of the Polistes variety. What you also see here is the adult wasp putting her head into the cells and doing trophallaxis, which is mouth-to-mouth -mouth liquid exchange, with the larva. And the larva actually produce a very sweet carbohydrate fluid that the adults can drink. So they often will dip their head into these cells just to get a drink from the larva and at the same time they will regurgitate protein that they've collected in the wild and maloxated uh, that protein will be given to the larva so it's a two-way exchange of fluid with the larva as well so the adults do trophallaxis mouth to mouth with each other and they also do it with the larva here we see one of the foundresses at rest at the bottom of the nest they also rest in this way they'll rest up near the wood but they'll also rest in this way down at the bottom of the nest and they'll cling upside down like this to the nest for extended periods of time while they rest. As we move in close and take a look at the larvae in this clip, you can see them producing the clear fluid that they will feed to the adults. And they do this in exchange for the protein that the adults will feed them. So they have an incentive, the larvae do, to keep producing as much of this fluid as they can to feed the adults in hopes that they will be fed more by the adults in exchange for that fluid. And the adults have an incentive to bring more protein to the larvae in exchange for the fluid that the larvae give them. So it's a very interesting evolutionary behavior that benefits both of them 
and certainly helps the nest thrive. Here we'll speed up a 24 minute clip just to show you the active behavior of the larva. They're actually quite active and mobile inside their cell. In real time, you don't see them moving as much, but when you speed up the footage, you realize they're kind of moving all the time. And it's this movement that attracts the adult wasps over to that particular cell. So they have an incentive to keep moving throughout the day especially when they hear activity on the nest or if they're hungry. They're kind of like baby birds. The more activity they make, the more attention they might receive. So they have an incentive to move. And here's another 24 minute clip sped up to just a few seconds. So you can see quite a bit of movement in there amongst the larva. Even the tiny larva are pretty active most of the time. So that wraps up the day's footage from May 25th. Now we're going to move into May 26th and show you the nest in profile, the way it actually looks from the side. So you get a better sense of the structure of the nest, which is a little harder to see from the perspective of looking directly under it. You'll notice the tallest cells are in the center of the nest. Those are the oldest cells. And they're built up as the larvae grow. The adult wasps will extend the size of those to match the length of the larva. So they will grow right along with the baby wasp until the wasp pupates into an adult. Now all of the short cells around the outer side of the nest are where the newest eggs are. And they don't need to be as tall yet because they're still eggs. Here on May 31st, we can see very active adult wasps on the nest. One up to the top of the frame is beginning to seek out a place to start building a new cell. She's got a ball of wood pulp in her mandibles and she's starting to spread that wood pulp around the edge of a cell to make a new cell on the nest. And we'll explain a little bit more about that process in a minute. But for now, we're just going to speed it up and watch her build this cell. You're going to see her go back and forth over and over again as she squeezes that wood pulp with her mandibles and she uses her antennas for direction and she goes ahead and makes that cell taller. Here back in real time she has finished building the cell and now she'll go out and forage for some more wood pulp to continue with other cells or maybe continue with that same cell until it's built up to be the right length that they need it for the developing larva. In this clip you can see Three Dot, who's on the lower part of the frame, engaging in some dominance behavior in which she sort of nips away at the face of Two Dot until Two Dot lowers her head and her antenna. And we'll freeze that frame here for you so you can see that. That generally is alpha behavior. So most likely Three Dot's going to be our alpha queen here, but they're still both pretty active, doing a lot of the same work on the nest. But that dominance behavior you know, leads one to believe the alpha might be three dot. And as we explained in part one, if you saw that, three dot has three dots on her face, two dot has two dots on her face. That's how we came up with those names. And typically when an alpha queen or one of the foundresses who's a co-foundress begins engaging in more dominance behavior and spends more time on the nest laying eggs, while the other goes out and does most of the foraging, that would suggest that she, the one that remains on the nest more, is probably the alpha. And she'll eventually become the main egg-laying queen, even though they both founded the nest together and both had been laying eggs, eventually one will lay most of the eggs and the other will not be allowed to do that anymore. Forgive the wobbly 
image here it was a very windy day on this day and the camera tripod occasionally just got bashed around by the wind here we see two dot return to the nest with a bit of insect protein which is basically a meatball from a insect that was hunted and killed in the wild and they brought back the food to the nest and share it together with the adults and then the adults will chew that up and feed it to the larva and in exchange the larva will usually produce a clear fluid that's a sweet carbohydrate fluid that the adult will drink so it's a two-way exchange of fluids and nutrients between adult and larva Here Three Dot defends her nest against an ant attack. And this was a constant threat. The ants came after them every day. And they had to constantly fight them off. And you'll see her buzz her wings here. That's an alarm bell, basically. Whenever there's an attack on the nest, she'll buzz her wings. And she'll lunge at the ant until it goes away. And they had to do this routinely many times during the week. Because the ants will come and try to eat the eggs and eat the larva in the nest. Here two dot returns and exchanges clear fluid through trophallaxis with three dot and that's something they'll do routinely throughout the day. You can see that the oldest larva in the nest, the three in the center, the tallest cells, have already woven their silk caps and begun the pupation process and they'll go through metamorphosis inside what is like a cocoon now that is covered up with their silk cap and they'll remain in there for a couple of weeks until they emerge by chewing their way out as adult wasps. And the silk that is used to weave these caps over the cells is actually produced by a clear fluid in the glands of the larva that is mostly protein-based. And so they get fed protein from the adult wasps and they create this silk dope, which is a clear fluid. When it hits the air, this clear fluid immediately becomes a very strong thread-like material. And they just strand thread after thread right across the roof of the cell until the cap is fully formed. Meanwhile, as the weather heats up, as it began to do at this time of year, you can see that the wasp, the adult wasp, is beginning to fan the nest a lot more to keep it cool. She'll just flap her wings as fast as she can, like a fan, blow air across the entire nest. Here you see one of the foundresses come back with a ball of wood pulp that she had carried back from the wild where she collected wood fiber from most likely a garden stake or a old fence or old patio deck sometimes old wood from old logs what she's doing here is inspecting the nest cell by cell to see where she would like to build another cell or continue building one that's needing to be lengthened as the larva grow so she's walking around with this ball of pulp underneath her chin and she's inspecting very carefully she's about to choose which one she'll work on and we'll show you what that looks like she's grooming a little bit after her flight she's cleaning her legs off and here in real time we're just gonna watch this because it's an interesting behavior they'll go across the entire nest cell by cell and this inspection process happens every time they return with another ball of wood pulp. And here she gets to work on one of the cells that she feels needs to be lengthened because some of the mature larvae in there are growing up pretty fast. And we'll just show you how she works on this cell to expand the length of it. She's squeezing the wood pulp together with her mandibles. And she uses her antenna to guide her so that she knows where to put that wood pulp and she can make it exactly uniform just like all the other cells. It's a pretty interesting process. Really amazing they can make these so perfectly uniform over and over again without any rulers, without any construction tools, just their bodies, their instincts, and their antenna. So you can see they're both quite busy on this day, making foraging runs for food, making foraging runs for wood pulp to build out the nest. It's going to be an active week, it looks like. We'll just watch her work for a minute here 
and we'll let you hear the atmospheric sound of the neighborhood they're in. So here she finishes up building that cell. Now she grooms a little bit to clean up afterward. And this is constant behavior. Wasp will groom throughout the day many, many times. They keep the nest clean that way. They keep their own bodies clean that way. Every time they return from foraging or finish feeding a larva or finish doing a task like building a cell, they will groom. Here we have three dot returning to the nest. We're going to show you this in high speed just to save some time. But she's got wood pulp in her mandibles and she's inspecting the nest. And now she's deciding which one to work on. And we'll show you how she can build that cell so quickly. Here we see two dot returning from foraging and she's got some insect protein that she's malixating and she will get that chewed up and she'll feed the larva with it. And as always after feeding a larva she'll clean up do her grooming, and then she'll get ready to take off on another foraging run. Here Two Dot returns again with some more food, insect protein. She'll malixate that a little bit by chewing it up in her mandibles, and then she'll feed it to the larva. And while she feeds it to the larva, the larva will also feed her some of the clear fluids that the larva produce so that they both get a meal at the same time. Here Two Dot returns with some more insect protein and she hands it off to Three Dot and Three Dot continues to malixate it while Two Dot does her grooming and then Three Dot goes ahead and feeds this protein to the larva. You can see how she malixates it for quite a while before she actually feeds the larva but at this point in their development the mature larva can take fairly large chunks of protein with no problem. It's the tiny larva that really need real small malixated parts, or sometimes they'll just take regurgitated protein in a fluid form. Here Two Dot returns again with some more protein and she goes right about the business of feeding the larva after she malixates it a little bit more. Gives just a little taste to each one of the larva. Here we see Three Dot back at the nest fanning the nest, which she did quite a bit on this day as it was warming up a little bit for temperature. And she was able to cool the nest down this way. You can see how with all the energy these wasps have to put out 
foraging for food, foraging for wood fiber, building the nest cells out, fanning the nest. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to do this. So they're constantly out there foraging for nectar for themselves and taking sustenance from the larva as well by drinking from the larva the little fluids that the larva produce. Here Three Dot returns again with some more food pulp. Gives a little bit to Three Dot, but then Two Dot takes most of it and feeds the larva directly. Here we see Two Dot return to the nest with fluids. She's probably been out nectaring, and she shares that fluid through trophallaxis with Three Dot. Here we see Three Dot dip her head into one of the cells that has a food store of some of the wasp honey that they make from regurgitating nectar. And she eats there for some time. And when she comes back out of the cell, you get a better look at the, uh, the honey that she was eating from. Here Two Dot returns with some wood pulp she foraged and she begins to build a cell at the top right of the frame. So you can see her preparing it, malixating a little further just to soften it up, get it ready to put onto one of the cells. And now she's doing her inspection to see where she might want to put that new material. And she ultimately decides to move up toward the top right of the frame and begins working on a cell up there. So what we're going to do is speed this up a little bit and show you that process. You'll see that the cell she chooses to work on is directly adjacent to some of the oldest cells that have already been capped off. That means there's a very mature larva in there that needs extra length on the cell in order to get ready to pupate. So she's building that one up for that reason. At this point, they're still sharing a lot of the workload on the nest as far as foraging for food and foraging for wood pulp. So here you see Three Dot this time, coming back with some wood pulp. She malixates it here a little bit more to get it ready to build with. You'll see here while she's inspecting her cells, deciding which one to work on, Two Dot comes back and keeps working on supporting the larva. Take a look at this cell in the red circle. You're going to see Two Dot lean her head in there and attach a water droplet to the side of the cell. This is the way they keep the nest cool by evaporative cooling. Now take a look at this cell, she'll do the same thing. Another droplet of water there you see up here. And what happens is the water droplets that she places inside these cells evaporates slowly and drops the temperature inside the nest while it does that. And so they continually do this. They'll drop droplets of water throughout the nest cells all day long during the hot weather and that helps regulate the temperature. It's one of the ways they do what's called thermoregulation of the nest. They fan the nest with their wings and they drop off droplets of water for evaporative cooling effect. Meanwhile, Three Dot is finishing up the cell she's working on there. You can see the new wood putty along the edge of the cell she's working on. It's a darker color than the rest. Once it dries, it'll be the same color as the rest of the cells. And she's just about done extending that one. And again, this is done because the larva, at least in her opinion, have grown big enough inside that cell that they're going to need a taller cell now. And so she's extending the wall to keep up with the growth of the larva and to prepare it ultimately to be capped off with the silk when the larva is ready to pupate, like you see the three in the center have already done. So this is a very busy time of building and foraging and preparing the nest to produce the first brood of adult wasps that will help support the nest as workers. And that's why they work so frenetically here in the beginning of the season, because they need that nest to thrive and they need the help to make that happen. So they're working very, very diligently to get those pupating wasps out of the nest as adults so that those adults can take over the foraging and the nest building activities ultimately and allow the queen, the alpha queen, the foundress of the nest, to focus on laying eggs more. And here you see she's just about finishing up, getting it about level with the others almost. And then she goes back to maintaining the nest, maybe getting a drink of fluid from the larva, checking on the cells. 
Here Two Dot returns with some more wood pulp and starts building a cell. I'll put that on fast forward for you so you can see it quickly. See so her start here with the usual inspection routine while Three Dot takes off and goes and forages some more. Here she chooses the cell adjacent to some of the silk caps and begins to build that up and get it ready for pupation. You see the mature larva inside that cell is going to weave a silk cap pretty soon. So it needs the walls raised up enough to support that. Meanwhile, Three Dot has returned and you see her going to work on a cell down at the lower left. We'll fast forward through that build again. Here Three Dot's fanning the nest to help keep it cool, while Two Dot returns with some food. This is insect protein, and she moves over to one of the cells and begins feeding a larva with that protein. There she goes. She's feeding it to the larva mouth to mouth through trophallaxis. Now she's done and cleaning up. Here Three Dot returns with some more wood pulp, gets back to work on extending one of the cells. We'll fast forward that for you. Now that she's completed working on that cell for the time being, we're back in real time. You'll notice that she puts her head down into the cell for an extended period of time here. Now over the next few minutes, we're going to show you in real time what she's up to. What she's doing right here is preparing this cell to lay an egg in it. And the way they do this is she'll reverse her body in a minute and drop the end of her abdomen down inside the cell. And she'll deposit the egg to the side of the cell. Not to the bottom, but to the side wall of the cell. And what she's doing right now is preparing that cell to accept and receive that egg. And eventually the egg will be hatched into a larva. And it's still attached to the side wall for an extended period of time while the larva goes through development. And at some point during the development of the larva, it will detach from the cell. Usually that happens during pupation. And then the pupating adult will eventually chew its way out of the silk cap on the cell. So most likely she's uh, chewing away a little bit of the cell wall to make it fibrous and ready to receive the egg. And her body produces material like a glue that will help glue it to the side of the wall, the egg. And they're quite good at producing fluids as needed while they're going through this egg laying process. And they also do the same thing to glue the nest itself to the wood of the barn eaves. And that material is very strong. It dries very strong. Here she reverses her body, drops her abdomen down into the cell. And now she's about to go through labor. And she'll be very, very still while she goes through labor and passes the egg out of her body and attaches it to the side of the wall. We'll show you this in real time. It's not the kind of thing you see every day. It only takes a couple of minutes, but we'll show it to you throughout the whole process in real time. That's it for her labor here. Now the egg has been attached to the side of the cell wall. She'll clean up a little bit. She'll check on some of the other larvae. And then she'll return to that cell and make sure that the egg is all good. And you'll see her spend a little bit of time working with the egg, making sure it's well attached. And then she'll move on with the rest of her day. And that wraps up our day's filming for May 31st of 22. Now we're going to jump ahead a few days to June 3rd of 2022. 
Here on June 3rd of 2022, you can see that another one of the larva cells has capped off with their silk cap. So that one's beginning pupation now as well. Here you see Two Dot returning with some food in her mouth. She's got some insect protein. She's going to maloxate it a little bit here. And then she'll begin to feed the larva with that food. The larvae are eating a lot right now in this stage of development. So it takes really full-time work from both of these co-foundresses to keep up with them. Here's another food delivery with Two Dot coming back with some insect protein that she'll feed to the larva after she maloxates it here a little bit. We'll just show you a few of these food runs just to illustrate the amount of work they're putting in routinely here. Every few minutes they're coming and going. Here we see Two Dot returning with some food and Three Dot immediately sort of nips at her face and shows a little bit of alpha aggression, which is a dominance behavior, kind of just nipping at her face, nipping at Two Dot's face, letting her know, all right, I'm the boss. I'm going to stay here at the nest most of the time while you do most of the foraging. And that seems to be the way this is playing out, although it may take a little longer before we know exactly who's the alpha foundress here, because they both still do quite a bit of foraging runs, and they both have been seen laying eggs. But there's more dominance behavior like this here. There seems to be more of this from 3-dot towards 2-dot. But here in this next clip, you see 3-dot actually was out foraging, and she comes back, and she's maloxating pulp for the nest, while 2-dot kind of takes a break up on top of the nest. So they're still going back and forth a little bit. Here Two Dot brings back some food and she starts to maloxate it a little bit on the nest and then she feeds it to the larva. Now the larva are getting mature enough around these silk caps, the ones that are located around the central silk caps, to easily eat large chunks of protein meat, basically meatballs, made up of the insects that these adult wasps bring back from their hunting. And they typically will hunt soft-bodied insects, caterpillars. That's what they prefer. But they'll also eat whatever is available in the environment. So that wraps up our footage from June 3rd. Let's move now into June 4th of 2022. Here on June 4th of 22, we're going to show you a profile of the nest to give you a better idea of how it's taking shape as it gets larger. You can see this is a very healthy nest with a lot of eggs developing. It has a lot of food storage in it where there's honey deposited in the cells. You see a lot of larvae, so it's thriving. The newest eggs are on the outer rings, the outer cells of the nest, and the more mature eggs and larvae are in the center of the nest. At this point, they're only laying eggs in the new cells that they build as they add on to the nest. However, later when some of the silk cap pupating adults chew their way out and vacate a cell, they will reuse a cell and lay new eggs in it. Here we'll freeze the frame for just a second so you can take a look at the new eggs. Notice how some of the cells, even though they have eggs in them, are also being used for food storage. You'll see some of the honey deposited into the same cells that have a growing egg. So this was all we shot for June 4th of 2022, so we'll move on into the next day of filming. Here we jump ahead to June 8th, and you'll notice four more of the pupating cells have capped off with silk. So now we have a good collection in the center of the nest who are all pupating at the same time. So the nest looks like it's thriving, and the first generation, the first brood of worker wasps, usually females, are going to be chewing their way out of these silk caps within the next couple of weeks to give some extra support to our two co-foundresses here. At that point, the two co-foundresses will engage in laying more eggs, probably the alpha foundress, which we believe is three dot based on her more aggressive behavior towards two dot. She'll be the alpha. She'll lay most of the eggs. At some point, she will disallow two dot from laying eggs at all. So here we moved ahead to June 10th and we'll go to field audio for this. June 10th, 22. He's showing a profile shot. We normally show this one from the underside, but here's a profile of it just to show you the growth pattern.
Now, what are we doing today? Looks like they've got a few more capped off. Should be a nice brood of female workers being born here in the next few weeks. Here we jump ahead a couple of days to June 13th of 22, and we see that one of the silk caps has been opened, and that cell is now vacant. And that means either one of them has chewed out, one of the pupa has become an adult and chewed out, or it was pulled out and eaten maybe by the others, or it had some kind of problem so they had to pull it out. It's unclear, but we do not see that adult wasp anywhere yet. Here's a view of the vacated cell. From the other camera on a close-up you can see there's already an egg inside it and by the way this is a flipped image compared to the previous shot here you can see the vacated cell is toward the bottom of the frame because of the angle of this camera but there is an egg inside it now attached to the side of the cell wall so you can see how they reuse these really quickly as soon as they're vacated a new egg goes in here in this close-up, you can see the pupating adults really well. Underneath the silk caps, you can see their heads, their antenna, and they're just about to come out. All that's left now is they have to chew their way out of the silk cap, and they'll be fully grown adults. And that'll happen over the next couple of days. Here we see Two Dot return with a morsel of food that she captured in the wild. And you'll see her lean down into one of these cells on the upper right of the frame and feed it directly to the larva. As always, once she's done with the meal for the larva, she'll go ahead and groom, clean herself up completely from the hunting and from the feeding of the larva, and then she'll go out and forage some more. And that's it for the footage on June 13th, 22. Now we're going to move over to June 14th, the next day of 22, and we're going to meet some of the new adult wasps who have come out of pupation. So here on June 14th, you see a brand new wasp who has just come out of the pupation cell, chewed her way out of the silk cap, and then went back into one of the cells head first. We see this happen a lot with the new ones that are born. If they first come out, then they go right back into any one of the open cells, and they get acclimated in there until they feel comfortable, then they come out. In this case, she popped out when she heard all the commotion around the camera. We're setting up a piece of glass at this point, getting ready to film for the day, and you see the uh, orange and the glass, that's an orange piece of tape, and it's what we hold the glass with, and then we put a glass, a piece of glass between the nest and the camera. That protects the camera from getting any kind of debris on it while it was filming. And the commotion was a little noisy, and you can see the wasps would get on guard when we were banging around with the camera. Another one peeks around the corner there, the lower left you can see they were very interested in this commotion by the camera and it puts them on guard. But you'll notice they don't attack. Polistes wasps typically are just not that aggressive. They don't tend to attack people unless you directly threaten their nest. And then they will sting. But in most cases you can just leave them where they are. They will not bother you. Now if they're invasive species you can go ahead and dispatch them. Polistes dominula is one of the invasive species in this country. They came from Europe. But uh, usually most of our native polistes are going to be very beneficial for the ecosystem, so you don't want to hurt them, spray them, or kill them if you can help it. 
So here we're just setting up the camera, getting the framing going. And we just include this part of it for you because it, it gives you good footage of how they respond to activity around their nest. And it shows you some of the brand new wasps on this nest who were just born. The one on the bottom right of the frame, that's the newest one that was just born. So you'll notice that the newest wasp, that's the one on the bottom right and the one on the bottom left, they are not working yet. They are born as workers. They will end up doing most of the foraging and maintenance of the nest and all that. But for now, when they're still brand new, they've just been born, they just chewed their way out of their silk caps, they are very calm. They don't do much at all. They just stand on the nest or they sit on the nest from the top up near the wood. And there's no real activity out of them until they get more acclimated to the temperatures and the environment that they're now living in. They end up just watching as we set up the camera gear around them and we whisper at them and they just watch and listen, kind of on guard. But they never do attack. So after we got all the equipment set up, they calmed down a little bit and started to move around the nest. And you'll notice that the new ones, that's the two on the lower part of the frame, they don't leave the nest yet. The one on the top of the frame is one of the co-foundresses. We believe that's three dot. So right now two dots out foraging, three dot is on the nest, and the two on the lower part of the frame are the new newly born adult workers. These are females and they will eventually become acclimated enough where they begin to leave the nest and start foraging for food and foraging for wood pulp and help build the nest and all that. But right now they're still kind of just getting acclimated to the world. They spend most of the time on the nest drinking from the larvae which produce fluid for them to drink and they kind of learn the dominance structure so you'll see three dot and two dot engaging in dominance behavior with them to let them understand that they're workers and they're not going to be queens or laying eggs. Here we see one of the new workers who eventually decides to climb back into one of the empty cells and she'll just stay in there for extended periods throughout the day. There's a couple reasons for this. One is they are looking for cooler temperatures and it tends to be cooler down inside the cells. They also seem to require the rest and the peace that that brings while they're in solitude prior to being ready to go out foraging. There may also be some part of the dominant structure here where the Subordinate workers spend more time with their heads in the cells just as they learn who's in charge and they're not out on the nest controlling things as much. And there is some research on Polistes wasps that suggests that the queens or the co-foundresses use something called antennal drumming where they tap their antenna on the larva while they're feeding the larva and raising the larva. And there's something about that process that signals to the larva that they're going to be born into the worker caste. They're not going to be queens or gynes, which means those that are raised to be reproductive females later in the season. They're in fact raised to be workers from the beginning, and something about that antennal drumming, the drumming of the antennas on the larva and on the pupa and on the adult wasps, the worker wasps themselves, communicates to those and chemically changes their bodies to not become reproductive and to understand the cast that they're in. And you'll see that antennal drumming happening even between the adult wasps. So you'll see two dot and three dot will often drum on each other or drum on the heads or the faces of the other wasps. And there seems to be some scientific research suggesting that all of that is part of the caste system or the social hierarchy system. Here we see Two Dot returning to the nest with some food. She's been out foraging and she shares that with one of the new wasps, one of the new adult wasps on the nest. Because these wasps are not out there foraging yet, so food is shared with them directly by the foraging wasps. And that food, if it's protein based, will eventually be shared with the larvae as well. 
by sharing it with these new adults, the new workers. The new workers then get to learn how to maluxate food, which is what this process is called, where they chew up the food and turn it into mostly liquid that they can drink. And ultimately that's going to be regurgitated to the larva as well. And that's how the larva get fed. Now take a look at the wasp on the right. That's the dominant female three dots. She comes over and headbutts the other one and she shakes her abdomen at the same time. We'll replay that for you in slower motion so you can see it. This abdomen vibration is all about teaching the others, the workers, that this wasp who's vibrating is the boss. She is the queen and she is in charge. So she's basically saying to them, yes, we'll feed you. You're allowed to live here, but you will be a worker. You will not be a queen. You will not be reproductive. You will not lay eggs. You will be foraging to help support the nest. So all of this aggression in the hierarchy training to establish dominance properly on the nest is important from the very beginning. So we see this worker on the upper left finishing up the morsel of food that she was given. She's basically in training. They're teaching her how to eat, teaching her how to maluxate, and eventually she'll be taught, and she'll know instinctually as well, how to feed the larva with that maluxated food. And here we see Two Dot getting ready to take off and go forage again. Here we see Two Dot returning to the nest after foraging. She comes back into the nest, lands, cleans herself up a little bit, and then she does trophallaxis here, which is the mouth-to-mouth -mouth fluid exchange with one of the other wasps. And you can see that fluid, which appears to be maluxated protein, being shared. And you'll see how they often do trophallaxis. Here's two more doing trophallaxis again on the upper left of the frame. And watch as these two wasps try to dominate each other and build hierarchy. One tries to get the other to bow down to her and lower her antennas. And that's very much related to establishing their part in the cast, their role on the nest. The dominant ones will have the most alpha behaviors. Meanwhile what you're going to see here is Three Dot decides to bow her head down into one of the cells here in the center. This is currently an empty cell and what she's doing here is she's preparing the cell to lay an egg in it. And so what's happening here is she's dropping her abdomen into the cell and she's getting into the egg laying position. Eventually she'll become very still and it'll take her a couple of minutes, but she'll attach an egg to the side of the cell when she's ready. She's still sort of getting it prepared here. And part of her job on the nest as the Alpha Queen is to make sure that the others are not laying eggs in these empty cells and if she finds eggs in there eventually when she establishes enough of her hierarchy on the nest she will begin to remove any eggs that are in there that are laid by the other wasps and eat them and then she'll replace them with her own eggs and that's part of the alpha behavior of the dominant queen so she'll try to run the other wasps away from her cell that she's going to lay an egg in and then she'll lay an egg herself Here she's about to get ready to lay the egg. So we're going to show you the egg laying process in real time here. She's just finishing the preparation of it now. When she comes back out of that center cell, she's going to start the egg laying process. She'll go into labor for a couple of minutes. We'll watch that and then we'll try to get a look at that new egg. While she's in labor here, we'll just transition to the field audio so you can hear what their actual environment sounds like. The neighborhood that the barn is located in it's a busy place, it's by a busy street. Uh, there's neighbor sounds, there's air conditioning going, there's sounds of life all around them all the time. Birds in the trees.
here she's all done laying the egg. Uh, she's now delivered the egg and attached it to the side of the cell wall. And we'll show you that egg in just a minute here after she's done inspecting her work. Try to get a look at that brand new egg. And there you have the newest egg on this nest, laid by the Alpha Queen in one of the cells that was vacated by one of the pupating adults that had chewed its way out of the cell. They'll reuse these cells over and over again throughout the season. Here you see 3 Dot inspecting her egg just to make sure everything's okay in there. She does a couple of things when she has an egg laid. She'll keep an eye on it. She'll make sure the other wasps are aware it's in there and she'll protect it and she'll make sure that she's exhibiting enough dominant alpha behavior to keep the other wasps away from her egg and so they won't eat it and try to lay one themselves. On this day, June 14th, we started to see some of these small bark lice or book lice are sometimes called which can be parasites in wasp nests they may use wasp nests to find food or shelter or a place to lay their own eggs you have to be careful if you collect wasp nests in the field and bring them back into the lab for study that you don't bring a bunch of these book lice bark lice type insects into your lab you need to heat treat any old wasp nest that you find before you bring them into the lab so you can kill off any of those bugs that you might find in an empty nest after the season is over. You'll see the wasps are very aware of parasites around their nests, so even when these little bugs go by, the wasps take notice and they step up and they raise their antennas and they're, they're aware of constant threat around them. Here we have what looks like a little parasitic wasp. It's a little hard to identify it for certain, but if it is a parasitic wasp, it can be very dangerous to a wasp nest because these will lay their eggs in or on the host nest larva, and they'll use that host nest larva as food, and they will eat those larvae alive until their own eggs have reached maturity. So our Polistes dominula here, they're very aware of what's going on around them because they don't want that to happen to their nest. But sometimes, despite their vigilance, some of these parasitic wasps will make a quick dash for the nest like this one does here and actually get onto the nest. And once that happens, all the larvae are at risk. Just a few minutes later, we see that same parasitic wasp leave the nest. And we can only hope it hasn't already deposited an egg inside the cell somewhere of one of these larvae. The parasitic wasp is definitely hanging around the neighborhood and clearly is interested in this nest. Here it makes another run at the nest. We'll see if our defenders notice it this time. Looks like it was able to approach the nest without being detected by the defenders and that could end up being a major problem for this nest later. And sure enough within a couple of minutes if you look carefully here you see that parasitic wasp going right into one of the cells. Once they get into the cells like this, they can lay an egg on the larva or inside the larva even, and that larva would then be doomed to be parasitized. And that's a pretty awful way to go because they will then be the host food for the parasitic wasp egg and larva. So as the parasitic wasp eggs turn into larva, that larva will begin to eat the dominula larva alive, and the dominula larva will eventually be killed by these other larvae eating it. So what you end up with is a wasp larva inside another wasp larva. Or sometimes they're ectoparasites, which means they simply feed on the outside of that living larva until they're old enough to pupate and climb out as adults. Either way, the larva that is the host food ends up getting killed by the parasite. The famous evolutionary scientist Charles Darwin was famously disgusted by parasitic wasp behavior and he used that as his prime example of why there cannot be a 
kind and benevolent God in charge of any of this stuff. He found that so brutal that no God would possibly do that on purpose. Regardless of the gnarliness of the way these parasitic wasps come to birth inside another wasp, nature can be pretty brutal either way. So you got to figure these Dominula wasps have to be on guard all the time to try to prevent this from happening to their nest and their young. So despite their best efforts, pretty much any wasp nest that you come in contact with is going to have some parasitic activity inside it. Here we see some more bark lice, more book lice as they're sometimes called, making runs at the nest as well. Meanwhile, life goes on on the nest. Here, Two Dot comes back with some food and shares it with the other wasps on the nest so they can malixate it and get it ready to feed the larva. You see them doing truffle axis and dominance behavior. One of the newer wasps is just relaxing inside one of the cells. The wasp on the upper right frame is malixating the food it was given which means just chewing it up, turning it into a liquid form that it can digest and then eventually probably regurgitate to the larva. Here it's finished malixating the food and now it bends into one of the cells and it gives that food to the larva. And it shares little bits of that food with various larvae and different cells. Here we see another parasitic wasp, or maybe the same one, is still hanging around the neighborhood. And now Two Dot returns from foraging, does some truffle axis with Three Dot. Our two newest members of this nest, the adults who were born recently and chewed their way out of their cells, are currently down head first in the cells and this is where they spend a lot of their time as newer members of this nest. Now up on the right corner there's some type of unidentified bug with a huge black head stalking the area. Doesn't seem to be attacking this nest yet but it's always a threat that could happen. So we're gonna freeze the frame here for you to give you a better look at this beastie. This seems to be a black flying insect with a very wide large head we have not yet identified this insect, so if you happen to know what this is, what species of critter this might be, please leave it in the comments and we can research it a little bit for everybody. We always like to try to share knowledge we can gain from our viewers, so we always encourage any of you to step forward and give us some information that we may not have yet. This little beastie is a very unique looking bug, so we'd love to know more about it. Here our little parasitic wasp has returned and is still stalking the area. Doesn't seem to be approaching the nest at the moment, but it sure spent a lot of time around there on this day. Meanwhile, Two Dot returns to the nest here in just a second with some wood pulp, and she'll use that wood pulp to construct a cell. So we're gonna speed up the footage here and let you watch that cell get built. Here we see two of the adult wasps fly in with wood pulp that they collected out in the wild and brought back to the nest. And they're each going to work on building a cell, so we're going to speed up this footage for you and show you both of them working simultaneously on building cells. The one on the lower left of the frame starts first, and then you'll see the other fly in with wood pulp and start one on the upper right of the frame. Here our unidentified big-headed beastie shows up again on the right, but they take note of it and basically run it off. Here they fly in some more wood pulp and begin building on that same cell down at the lower left of frame. 
So we'll watch this one get complete in high speed. A few minutes later, another one comes in and starts building more cell on the right side of the frame. So we'll show you that one in high speed as well. And here we have another cell being built on the lower right of the frame. Show you that one in high speed too. Thank you. 